It's like a flute. Bloop. <laughs> I am tired this morning. I don't know, it's just been a long couple of days. Just, just tired. I'm, I'm normally not this tired. Like I, I, I feel it in my face and, and everything. Anyway, I got my Bob Ross cup here today. So when you fill it up with coffee, it, it changes colors. But we're gonna have a chill day today. We're gonna do some plumbing. And uh, really all the plumbing is done in this house and I and I explained that in a different video and I'll be sure to pop that below. But I think it was the heat. It was the first 90 degree day this week that uh, that we had and, and I remember I was installing a bath fan and I'll put that video below as well. Um, and I was sweating my ass off. It was so hot. In fact that video is only like three minutes long because I just had to keep it moving. I, I couldn't. I. It was so windy outside at the same time that um, I had to keep the door shut to the shop on one side, and it was. I, I just felt the the the, the, the uh, temperature rise. So I don't know if the heat just got to me or something. But we're gonna have a chill day today. I like doing plumbing. Plumbing's fun to me. It's uh, relaxing. But like I said, most of the plumbing's already done. It's in the floor. Now it's a matter of bringing all of the pipes up into the wall and then do the venting through the roof. So it, it, it'll be pretty, pretty interesting, I think, today because you, know, you get to see how I vent um, the different uh, appliances and whatnot. And... Uh, just how I do the overall layout and um, what what gets a vent, what doesn't get a vent. Some things aren't going to get a vent. They're going to get, um, it's called a studer valve, which I don't really like to use too much. I think that if you can vent out through the roof, uh, it's much better than these little studer pop vents that, you know, just release some air, but they're not supposed to let any smells in or, you know, whatever. But I got to go to Menards, which is my favorite store. Um, if you know, you know. If you don't know what Menards is, you're going to find out. Because I think, uh, I think, I don't know, they don't, like, they don't like cameras in the store. Yet they have like 50 million cameras in the ceiling. So what's one more? So I figure we can go together to the store and uh, you'll get to see uh, all the things that they have at Menards. So I get these rebates and, the, and, and they're really smart about it because they give these 11% rebates and then they mail you a postcard and uh, it's got a barcode on it and you just bring it to the, the cash register and this one's like 900 bucks. So you figure out how much material I spend a month but um, I mean, I buy everything there. Uh, uh, I get all my material for the job and then uh, go grocery shopping and uh, <laughs> see some friends maybe. I, I mean, I've been, I've been going to the same location for like almost 10 years. So it's kind of it's like Cheers, you know, everyone, everyone knows your name. But uh, I'm starting to wake up, so I'm gonna make a list and uh, Get some more coffee, and we'll hit the road. Okay, up, Bob, get up, get moving. You know, this tiny house is really cool. Um, it's got a lot of really interesting stuff that I've never done before. Man, that sun is bright. It's one of the hard things about, I guess, filming in the m middle of the morning. Anyway, it's got a digital shower valve in it that we're gonna have to investigate today. I've never, I've never put this, this size uh, valve in uh, any house, let alone a tiny house. I say that a lot, let alone a tiny house. But we're not gonna leave it alone. We're gonna, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some stuff done today. That's for sure. 
Where are the fittings? All right. So I need some two inch tees. Where are the elbows? Elbows. These will work. All right, let's go check out some of the interesting stuff that they got here. Menards is one of those interesting stores because they got, you know, all your normal plumbing and home goods stuff, but then you get towards the back, things get a little messy. <laughs> they got mattresses and then a, a whole uh, grocery store. So, gonna get some lunch. Here we go. So, I eat a lot of frozen pizzas. Oh, what do I got here? I get some ice cream too. Pretty much all the crappy food you could get. Uh, what else they got? I like water, sparkling water especially. And they got like a whole aisle of energy drinks. <laughs> so lots of random stuff. Also a big fan of like pretzels and trail mix and all sorts of stuff like that throughout the day to snack on. I eat a lot of food <laughs> all day. <laughs> I just drink water and coffee and eat a lot of food. And uh, we got what we need, I think. Ah, man, I need to get pipe. I need to get PVC pipe. I know I don't have any of that. trying to think. I made a list, but I always forget stuff, you know? I always forget stuff that's on the list. I gotta get better at. <sighs> I got a lot of faucets, too. Um, I, gotta, I gotta get better at making lists. All right, now I got everything. I put these, I put these pipes on the bottom of the cart. I hope they don't fall as I'm trying to go through the parking lot. You know, sometimes I wonder if the rest of the world that wakes up after seven o'clock on whether or not they uh, know how nice and cool it is in the morning. So I think we're gonna start with the powder room. I typically like to start with something easy, build some momentum, so we can go into doing something harder. Doesn't always work out, but odds of success are way higher when you get things in momentum. So I figure we'll start, we'll create some momentum by finishing the powder room. That should go simple, pretty, pretty swift. And then we'll go into the master bedroom. Master bedroom should you know, bathroom should go easy too. The only thing I'm concerned about there is I'm wondering because they're only two by six uh, loft joists for the loft up above. If I'm going to need to laminate the sides of those when I bore through it with this two inch pipe. The other option would be to kind of drill along the top of the wall, but I don't think that's really gonna work either. So I might need to laminate the sides of the two by six joists. In fact, you know what, we'll, I'll show you how to do that. 
it's good practice. I've got some some pieces of three quarter plywood that are already cut that I was going to use for something else. So we'll just trim those down to uh, five and a half by twelve or whatever, and uh, we'll just laminate it. It'll be, it'll go pretty fast. So. I got all the vents coming up through the floor like this and I put test caps on it so nothing would fall through the floor or I mean fall into the pipe. So these things are kind of tricky. You got to unscrew these and then you smack it back down. Then they come right out and see it's like a it's like a flare compression fitting and Works good. Okay, so I gotta come with a coupling onto here. Now this is out of the wall, but I know I knew that this area was gonna be cabinets. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna there's a there's an outlet up here or a switch anyway, so I'm gonna roll this to the side. I got really bad knees, so sometimes I gotta like Stretch out <laughs> a little bit. So when I'm using the primer, I like this. I, I like to ditch the original brush and, and use these uh, aftermarket ones or whatever you want to call it or replacement brush because it's just, they're a lot, they hold a lot more and you don't have to like dunk the thing inside there a million times over. I already got primer on my shirt. I don't know how I'm carrying the stuff in. Primer's nasty. If you're working in, you know, finished areas, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to get that stuff on anything. Uh, they actually, they make a clear primer, but the reason it's purple is so that the inspector knows that you put primer on there. You got the glue. Factory brush is good for the glue because I like the, the, to have the cap on there so I don't want it to dry out. I just realized that I put primer, or I mean I put glue on both sides of the coupling just now. So I push it down like this and, uh, and, then, and then I give it a little rotate of a turn and then I just hold it there because the if you don't hold it for like 30 seconds, it uh, it can it can push back out. So once you hold it, then then it's good. So I like to <clears throat> have color coded bins to put the fittings in. Like my yellow one is for two inch, and my blue one has got all one inch stuff in it. That just keeps things really organized. And I always say buy like three times as many fittings as you're gonna need. You can always return them, but it's good to have an, it's good to have a lot. I know that like a regular plumber who does you know plumbing full time, all they do is plumbing. They're gonna have individual individual bins for all their major fittings anyway. So. Um, it's just a good practice to stay organized. All right, so I'm gonna get a, let me get a bandsaw. A lot of people like to use different, you know, whatevers. They make all sorts of different tools for cutting pipe. I like the bandsaw the best because it's fast and easy to work with. All right, so. I want to get this this thing in the wall as quick as possible, so I'm going to use a Street 90. And uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, or I mean a Street Elbow. Street Elbow means one side is like the pipe, so it goes in, and the other side is flared, where it receives the pipe. Male, female. 
and this way I'll be able to roll this vent into the wall pretty easy and then I'll go with another 45 a regular one that will just then ride up the wall I might have to move this wire but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out and then I'll just dry fit it with no glue or primer and just kind of see how we land and keep it flush to the one side it's actually a little it's actually a little long and I'll show you how you can tell that see that see how it's tipping away from the stud that means that the the 12 inch piece is too long. It's not letting it relax. So I'm gonna take a little bit off. Oh yeah, much better. So I won't glue this bottom one yet. It's kind of a, something you're gonna do in unison. And uh, because I needed to get it I need to use a, I'll need to use a torpedo level to get this just right. This is like the hardest one out of the whole job. So when I do this kind of stuff, I, I double glue like really heavy so it doesn't set real fast. All on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this in the wall by holding the, the level this way. So I know it's flush in the wall and then just like that. Let that set. And then I can come straight up the, the wall. This vent is gonna run up the wall and then it's gonna run through the soffited ceiling above the bathroom and then the bathroom sink or vanity or lav is going to run up the wall. They're both going to meet in the soffit above the ceiling. And then we're going to go through the roof. Freaking nasty. <laughs> Alright, so I got this. You won't be able to see it until I put it in there, but this is the pipe that's gonna go up through the roof. And I usually send it like way up through and then come back and trim it to where it needs to be. And then this is gonna connect to our pipe that comes from our va uh, vanity or lav. Lavatory is what they would call that, I guess. Anyway, I glue this up. You know, horizontal vent piping, it's argumentative. A lot of people say, well, as long as it's not negative, like as long as it's even and I don't know, I just, not a fan of that. I want it to, I like to have a quarter inch, um, quarter inch pitch on anything horizontal when it's drains or vents because, you know, if you have a heavy rain, I mean, I know this is gonna sound ridiculous, but whatever. If you're gonna have a heavy rain, you want that water to not build up inside the vent. A lot of people know what you know, what the drain vent is, but unless you're a plumber and it's been explained, maybe you don't know what the vent is for. And the easiest way to explain why a vent is important is if you've ever taken a jug of water or like a two liter bottle of pop and you turn it over upside down and you try to pour it all out at once, it's gonna go glug, 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 glug until it's gone. But if you were to poke a hole in the top, it would just go 
Well, essentially that hole that's poked in the top, that's what a vent does. Now you know. All right, it's really hard to show this, so I'm just gonna take the camera up here and show you what I did. So you got your, maybe it's easier to see this way. Okay, let's start here. This is the first pipe we did. Went all the way up, goes across the ceiling, and then goes up through the roof. This is the more complicated side. So let me set you down. Let me see here. Okay. So this right here is the drain for the vanity. I drew some lines on the wall. So it's a floating vanity and then it's got two drawers. So I gotta make sure I had to make sure that this thing was like just right on the money. In fact, here's the Here's a drawing right here. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll do my best. Oh yeah. So you see how the vanity is going to float. It's got under cabinet lights. It's got two drawers. There's a lot going on. And then it's got the shower, or I mean, this the. It's got the sink faucet coming out of the wall. That hasn't arrived yet, but when it does, we'll, we'll get that installed. So I had to be very, uh, very specific as to where this goes, but back to our vents. So our vent goes up and it ties in, Let's see, and then they go out the roof. Everything sloped right. I mean, this ceiling made it really easy. This is a long video. But we finally made it. This is our this is our shower valve. Oh. This is the mixing valve for the master bathroom. It's like a flute. <laughs> so I don't know, let's see, does it have the keypad in here or is this just the rough end valve? No, this is just the rough end valve. This is the power supply. It's got some mounting clips and looks like a Wi-Fi antenna. So, because these are so uncommonly purchased, it takes forever to get the different pieces of it. Plus, no sense in having uh, super expensive keypads and stuff just chilling around the shop when they're not going to get installed for a month or so. So, this is our big boy valve. It's got three quarter inch water inlets. And then it's got six different half inch zones. So the hot and cold come here and from there are all mixed lines after that. There's a rain head, body sprayers, a handheld, a shower head, a partridge in a pear tree. There's a lot of things going on. Um, Fortunately, I'm cutting this video a little short. There's too much to cover. We'll install this tomorrow, along with all the venting for the master bathroom. And tomorrow you'll be a master bather.